Today, we're going to talk about the voice in your head. Yes, that's right. Not my voice, but the voice in your head that guides your behavior. So I'm Malcolm Cox, and this is a teaching class for the Thames Valley Churches of Christ for October 2023. And we're going to do a couple of classes on how we draw close to the Father and how that helps us to be in submission to his will. So today, the first class, our security. Where is our security? Finding strength from hearing the Father's voice. So in this short series, we're going to explore how our security in the Father enables our willing submission to him. The critical issue before us today is the way in which we hear the Father's voice. Uh, we may intellectually understand many things with our mind about our faith, but it's the voice in our head which so often controls our feelings and our behavior. Which voice dominates in your head at the moment? Do you find it easy or hard to hear the Father's voice? Perhaps you even think it's rather weird to expect such a thing. However, Let's consider the example of Jesus. Can you imagine how he felt on the occasion of his baptism in Matthew chapter 3? So have a look at this with me. In Matthew chapter 3, we see the incident of his baptism and the summary of it is that he sees the Spirit of God in verse 16 descending like a dove and alighting on him. And then a voice from heaven says, This is my Son. The Father is speaking. This is my son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Now that voice was for the crowd, but wasn't it also for him? How would you feel if that was you? And that's not the only time. Consider what happened on the mountain in Mark chapter 9. Up there on the mountain, we have Elijah and Moses and a couple of friends of, uh, of Jesus, of course. And then in verse 7, a cloud appears, and it covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Again, some instruction there for the people around, but it, imagine how Jesus feels. This is my son. I love him. Isn't that wonderful? Do we hear that kind of voice when we spend time with God. Now it's true that Jesus was unique and that scripture doesn't mandate that we hear the voice of the Father audibly. However, don't we have the same kind of relationship with the Father that Jesus had? Isn't his example an inspiration for us and an invitation for us to enjoy the same kind of relationship? I would say we're authorized and encouraged to trust in an identical quality of relationship with the Father, the same kind of quality that Jesus enjoyed. Consider Romans chapter 8, verse 15. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. We can call our Heavenly Father, Father, in the same way as Jesus. We have that sonship. And again, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, Because you are his sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. By the way, for the women listening, this shouldn't be seen as an exclusively male issue. That's not what the sonship thing is about here. The word son is important because in that culture it conveyed the idea of inheritance. And in that day, it was the male son who inherited from the father. So it is it's this that we're meant to see in the father-son relationship between our heavenly father and Jesus, not anything else. It's just indicating that we inherit the same way that Jesus inherits. That's the point. So going back to our main issue here, the strength of Jesus' connection with the Father enabled him to endure tough times, right? Including one of his darkest moments in Gethsemane. Even there, in Gethsemane, he was able to use that intimate form of address, Abba, Abba, Father, he said. Everything's possible for you. Take this cup from me in Mark 14, 36. 
yet not what I will, but you will. Now, we're going to talk more about the submission issue in the next class, because he lived a life of submission to the Father. And how did he manage to be so submissive when it was so challenging for him? I think he did it. He was able to do it because he experienced the loving acceptance of his Father. And I believe that's on many occasions. We have those two referenced on the mountain and at the baptism. But were they the, were they the only times he heard the Father's voice? I submit it's unlikely when he was in the desert or other times when it says he often withdrew to lonely places and prayed and much of that time was on his own. Are we to suppose that he didn't hear the Father's voice then? They had a naturally strong connection and the Father was there to reassure him at any time he had need and I suggest there were many times in those three years of his public ministry that he had need of his Father's reassurance and, and strengthening. And if that's the case for him, is it not also the case for you and me? This is something I think would be worth discussing in our groups together. Let me tell you a story. A story that, that reminds us of the significance of the voice in our head. When I was 17, I was studying for a piano exam. I was studying for grade six piano. It was very important. In fact, it was crucial to my future because I wanted to go to university to study music and I needed to get grade six piano in order to be accepted. A lot of pressure. Bear in mind that I'm not a natural pianist. I enjoy playing the piano very much. If you're watching the video, you can see it behind me and I play it nearly every day just for fun. I enjoy it, but I'm not a natural pianist. My fingers are not naturally um, coordinated. I have to work really hard at it. I was very nervous about the exam. In fact, I had not taken any piano exams before this. My teacher, Michael Lewis, my, I just, I, I really love that man. He made such a big difference in my life. Um, my piano teacher, Michael Lewis, knew that exams were hard for me. So he just thought, we'll wait till the big one and then we'll just go for it. So I worked on my grade six for a long time. He helped me practice. He helped me correct what I was doing. And he knew I found it so hard. And I'd play a piece of music to him, one of the exam pieces, and I'd make a mistake. And he would be so reassuring. Yeah, don't do it that way. Do it this way. Use this finger instead of this finger. Position your hand like this instead of this. Now practice it again. Do it again. Do it again. You see, you're doing it right now, aren't you? You know what to do. You can do this. Yes, I know it's difficult, but you can. And I'd make mistakes. He'd correct or show me a better way. I'd practice that. I'd get it better. I never got it perfect, but I would improve a little bit day after day, week after week, month after month. And always his voice was one of calm reassurance and instruction. Come the day of the exam, I'm nervous as anything. And of course, you can imagine if you're nervous, your fingers don't behave. They behave even worse than you, they might normally anyway. I'm very nervous. But when I went into the exam, I started to play the pieces. And although I was nervous and fearful, the voice in my head was the voice of Michael Lewis, my teacher. Michael Lewis's voice, his voice was louder than my doubts. His voice was louder than my fears. And as a result, that voice carried me through the exam. And lo and behold, miracle of miracles, I passed. I didn't get a very high mark. I didn't care. But I did pass and I got to go to university to study music, which I wanted to do. And that's where I met my wife and many other wonderful things happened as a result of all that. And I owe so much of it to the fact that Michael Lewis was the voice in my head that day. Now, that's just a piano exam. But what about all the big decisions we have to make and all the small ones? We need the voice of the Father to be accessible to us in some way or other. So let me give you these questions for reflection. Firstly, we can discuss this uh, in our groups. Firstly, how do you honestly feel about the idea of listening for the Father's voice? Is it a bit too weird for you? Or is it something you'd welcome? How do you honestly feel? Secondly, what is it about the example of Jesus which is relevant and attractive to you? the example of his ability to hear the voice of the Father and maybe the difference it made in his life. How, how is that relevant? How is that attractive to you? And then thirdly, 
If you want to hear more of your father's voice, how will that happen? Perhaps you've already done some things that help you with that, but maybe there are other things you could try. Could you discuss that in your groups? What's been helpful, what's been useful, what's been effective so far, and what have you tried? Or perhaps what have you not yet tried that you've been thinking about, but are still trying to pluck up the courage to try? I'd really like to know what you think about this. So have a good discussion in your groups. Next time, we're going to go on to look at how Jesus' security in the Father's love enabled his willing submission to his Father's will. So we'll look at that next time. So please add a comment. You can drop a message anywhere you see or hear this recording. And if you have any thoughts on this or questions you'd like to put to me that I might include in the next recording, then please drop them my way, Malcolm at malcolmcox.org, or you can message me via the website malcolmcox.org. So, till the next time, I hope that you enjoy hearing the Father's voice. He is our Abba Father. Let's talk to him, but let's listen to him too. Take care, and God bless you.